Good morning, fellow option traders. This is Jeff, and today is Tuesday, November 27, 2012. Got my first cup of coffee under my belt, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, yesterday, uh, even though I was at my daughter's house painting her living room, uh, we did get a couple of alerts set off, and we entered a couple of trades yesterday. Look at the account statement here. If we just take that out, I think we should be able to see everything for the last two days. All right, uh, had alerts go off on Apple uh, right at the open, basically 9.36.37, and then later on <clears throat> had the alert go off on Chipotle. So what I did on those two, let's go to the charts. Where's my charts? Where is my charts? There we go. I'll bring up Apple here. Uh, jumped in, uh, Apple gapped up, set off the alert, <clears throat> and we got in here at this point early in the morning uh, with a um, bull put. Notice that it has a December 2 expiration. So I chose, based on that, to move out to a 17-day or roughly three weeks away expiration. And the other trade from yesterday is Chipotle Mexican Group. I chose a weekly on that particular one. And we will take a look at the chart here. I have to say I apologize. I have not updated my <clears throat> uh, open positions or closed positions, the monthly performance. I haven't done that uh, recently, and I'm in the process of getting that updated. And probably by the time you see this video, and I'll have it uh, posted on my blog. But we entered Chipotle yesterday. And this is what it looks like with a bear call. It was around this time of the day, around 1300, I think it said, when the uh, alert went off. I put down the paint roller and opened up my laptop and executed the trade, went back to painting. All right, I thought that I would show you something interesting today before we uh, look at the scans. I thought that I would uh, have us all take a look at the risk profile using SPY as a weighting factor. So well, let's see here. We will hide simulations and go to portfolio beta weighted. And it's beta weighted based on the SPY, which is has a beta of 1, and that's kind of what, what you want your, uh, when you want to look at a whole portfolio, that's what you're going to be looking for, is uh, something with a beta of 1, and SPY, of course, is always 1, so always use SPY. All right, so this is what the portfolio looks like. It's, uh, it's a bullish portfolio for right now, as long as SPY keeps above 136 according to this we should be okay and it's showing that uh, right now the open positions are up a total of 411 the red line of course is expiration for 1126 but we could I don't think it's going to matter it's just taking into I don't know what expiration it's using because we got a lot of expirations here this is a probability date over here and really has nothing to do with expiration. 
So the red line, I'm not sure if it's the next monthly expiration that it just automatically assumes it's going to take a look at. I'm not sure. Which I think is the reason for this kind of dip in here. But um, part of the reason for the dip might be the couple of bearish positions that I have open right now. Like I have the uh, insurance policy calendar on the queues. And Chipotle also has a bearish position, so that may be the reason for this little bit of a dip here. But I thought you might be interested in taking a look at that. From a Delta perspective, the portfolio has a 91 Delta, which is um, anytime your Delta is positive, you're sort of leaning towards the uh, bullish side. If it's negative, it's bearish. Theta is interesting. Uh, the estimate is $30 a day, but a lot depends on which way the market moves and what happens to volatility, and above all, what happens to this gamma. Uh, I'm not gonna, not planning on getting into the Greeks today. All right, so that's the portfolio. So let's go back to single symbol. All right, a uh, quick look here. And a few things. Let's take a look at the VIX. It was strange yesterday because uh, the market just uh, was down just a little bit, but the VIX popped up pretty high here. For um, I don't think that that matches exactly what the market was doing, but I'm no expert at this. Honest to God, I'm not. Uh, I leave that up to uh, more um, people that are into this much more like the Sosnos of the worlds and, you know, the people that are on the Think or Swim, swim lessons every day, which uh, if you get a chance, you really should check that out. But what I do find a lot of people have been saying lately is that a better fear indicator is the 30-year bond. And what this is telling us is that if people are leaving bonds that the money has to go someplace and it's going into equities which means the market should be um, this is a when the bonds make a move down like this this is a um, bullish indicator for equities but you can see here that bonds have been climbing on the weekly chart pretty steadily so that looks a little bearish overall short term short term <laughs> Spit it out, Jeff. Short term bullish, long term bearish, according to that. The um, current thinking, anyway. I don't know. Maybe they're all crazy. All right. That's why they call them the talking heads. All right. There's a bunch that we don't have to look at. We don't have to look at Apple. Can take a look at, uh, well, we're in Amazon, so we don't need to take a look at that. We're not in Baidu, so, all right, downtrend. Uh, this could be we're st still waiting for maybe something to happen in the next couple of days on Baidu. Sure would like to have K at least get above 80. And definitely, or not definitely, but the desire would be for D to go above also. On a weekly, no confirmation on a weekly. CF we're in. That's what the risk profile looks like. Chipotle we're in. This is what that risk profile looks like. Salesforce we're in that. And that's what that profile looks like. Well, we're not in Google. Well, I'll be danged. Anything happening with Google? Our alert didn't go off. Um, probably should have been looking at this as an alert to the downside. We were looking for an alert uh, long term, a longer term trade over here. But there also is a shorter term um, bearish trade here. So, uh, missed that one. Not going to chase it. Uh, MasterCard, we're in that one. Price line, crazy, crazy price line. Let's see what crazy price line is doing. Still up there after their earnings. Uh, do we have anything going on here? Uptrend, stochastic up. Uptrend, stochastic up. 
still waiting for something to develop. Uh, if you were going to maybe do a two or three day trade on this um, hourly chart here, there might be something a little bit more interesting. And I want to let you know that I changed this. You can see here, this I changed this to a 78 minute new feature on Thinkorswim is the ability to select any candle width that you want. And that's what I did here. So let me show you. Um, where is that set? It's set here. Aggregation. And it's five days and you can select custom. So what I did it's 18 minutes. I took, um, we like a 5 to 1 ratio, so I took the amount of minutes in a trading day and divided it by 5, and it came up or with an hour and 18 minutes or 78 minutes. But the unfortunate part is, even though I have um, after hours shut off here, this candle, the very first candle each day, starts... And if you look down at the bottom, you'll see it starts at 8.48. So it ends up being a little bit deceiving. I sent an email to Thinkorswim Support and said, hey, what's going on? And they said, too bad, so sad. Uh, there's no way to say when to start the candle, even though you have after hours uh, shut off. If there's a trade after hours, it's going to show up there. So that's the unfortunate part, but I tried. But you can give, set this to 78 too. Normally it's an hour chart, an hour and 18 minutes is probably not going to make a whole heck of a lot of difference, if you know what I mean. Uh, Panera, do we have anything going on there? We were looking for a long-term bullish trade here. Uh, we did get a hook up on D yesterday, but uh, the alert was not set off. We'll let the alert in for another couple of days and see what happens. I'm pretty well uh, stocked up, I guess you might say, for right now. Um, not sure that I want to put any more at risk. And the way that you can determine that is by going over here, and it says here that... Uh, you actually have, it's a little bit less than 7,000 because these are all credit spreads. But it says I have 7,000 at risk. That is, um, I don't like to do more than 10 or 15% of my account at any one time. And so that's where I'm at. Just in case everything goes wrong, I won't blow it out like what happens to a lot of people. All right, um, quick thought about what I'm thinking about. Well, no, I think I'm going to hold off until tomorrow for that. To get to all my positions caught up so that you can see where I stand uh, for this week anyway. And then tomorrow maybe I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the Profit 10 portfolio for um, January. All right, uh, time's up. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and happy trading.